Hi everyone. Um, this is the second doubt which was posed to me. The question is re related to uh, Schmidt triggers. So the question was that uh, what I said in the video. I have been. I I don't. I didn't go through the video again. But uh, the question was that how do you say that false triggering is avoided once we go for Schmidt triggers? So to answer that question, I think I have already explained it in the video itself. But I'll probably, since it's a conceptual question, I thought I'll elaborate it a little bit. Okay. So Schmidt triggers are mainly used for sine wave to square uh, as a sine wave to square wave converters. Okay. And we said digital circuits need uh, square waves. And so normally you will find Schmidt triggers uh, in um, many digital systems where you have to convert sinusoidal signals to square signals. One of the simplest way of doing this sine wave to square wave conversion is what we call a zero crossing detector. A zero crossing detector or ZCDs are just very high gain amplifiers. You just put high gain op amp in open loop. You connect one terminal, the positive terminal to the input signal and the negative terminal you just connect it to ground. Then you have a, a zero crossing detector. The IV characteristics of a zero crossing de detector will just sorry the input output characteristics of a zero crossing detector will simply look like this. You will have uh, an input signal as you vary your input signal. If your input signal is positive, your output will be plus V sat. If your input signal is negative, your output will be minus V sat. Okay, this is minus V sat and plus V sat. So V i if it is greater than zero, you get plus V sat and v i less than 0 you get minus v z. So this is the simplest circuit which we call a zero crossing detector and it will convert a sine wave to square wave. The problem we said with this circuit is what we called as false triggering. False triggering happens uh, especially when your input signal is crossing the zero the zero crossing level and your input signal short slope should be very slow. If your input signal slope is very slow then you have this problem of false triggering. So what is the problem of false triggering? In the presence of noise, this noise can be due to the op amp. So I can input refer the noise at the input of the op amp. I'm going to call it as a voltage Vn. Now instead of comparing Vi to zero, because I'm adding Vn here, I'm going to compare Vi minus Vn. I'm comparing the difference between Vi minus Vn. So now I'm going to draw the curve here. I'm, I'm just probably show it in the uh, time domain as well. And I'll all, we'll see it in this curve here. So whenever V i minus V n becomes greater than zero, your output will go to high. So your input signal is slowly changing. The moment your input signal crosses V n instead of ground, we, we have to now worry about V n because there is another voltage uh, which we have modeled it mathematically. There is no real physical voltage, but we have mathematically modeled the noise of the op amp as a voltage source. So we are now comparing V i minus V n. Whenever V i minus V n is greater than zero, so for example, let's assume V n here is a noisy signal, which is a time varying signal that can vary much faster there than your input signal. It can vary. It can go through plus positive or negative values uh, within your uh, as your input signal is changing very slowly within this interval your noise signal can change its polarity many many times okay so your noise is going to change very fast and now we are comparing vi minus vn and the comparator as far as the mathematical model of the comparator goes it is going to compare vi minus vn instead of vi to zero so now let's assume vn is zero and vi has just crossed zero so vi has just crossed zero at this point i'm showing in this figure here in this figure so you can see the moment vi crosses zero your output has changed its state it has gone from minus v sat to plus v sat now remember vn is still changing with time it's a noisy signal now at a different time instance as your signal slightly increases from this point to this point at this point your noise voltage becomes more than the input signal. So now we are comparing Vi minus Vn. Okay. So initially I assumed Vn to be 0. So the moment Vi cross 0, the other output has gone to plus V sat. Now I'm saying your Vi has increased slightly, it has gone to some voltage say delta V. 
and it turns out your noise voltage is greater than delta v which means as far as the comparator volt comparator is concerned vi minus vn has become negative so immediately your comparator's output will go to minus v sat now since noise is again time varying your noise let's say returns back to zero it returns back to zero then immediately your output will because your vi is already greater than zero to begin with vi minus vn will be greater than zero so your output will go to plus v sat so it will keep triggering between plus v sat and minus v sat as long as your input levels are within the noise limits so your noise is a random process it will change within certain voltage limits okay so within those uh, usually that that is defined by the noise power so if it's within those limits you will have a uh, false triggering okay so once your input level is very high you won't have false triggering so this is the problem the problem of false triggering can also be understood from uh, the input output transfer characteristics so what happens here vi minus vn usually in the absence of noise if your v noise is zero as your input signal was changing your it was this the if you plot the response of the circuit on the transfer characteristics this the output was going like this it was going from minus v sat and suddenly when vi became greater than zero the output went to plus v sat and stay there now in the presence of noise what's happening here is that it has transitioned let's say from minus v sat to plus v sat okay but suddenly your noise is changing here so the vi minus vn if i plot vi minus vn as a function of time it is going to have some positive and negative variations which which is when you will have a false triggering okay so vi minus vn is changing positive or negative and therefore you will end up having false triggering so the false triggering happens because the positive to negative transition and the negative to positive transition so i'll say sorry the negative to positive transition and the positive to negative transition happens at the same point it happens at zero that's how the characteristics looks like because of this you have a problem of false triggering this problem is cleverly fixed by using a schmidt trigger by introducing what we call hysteresis what does hysteresis do it ensures that the high to low transition and low to high transition doesn't occur at the same point that's it if you ensure that you are not going to have any false triggerings at all so if you look at this circuit so this is a uh, an inverting schmidt trigger up analyze the circuit you can go through that video this is the characteristics of the inverting schmidt trigger whenever your input level initially let's assume your output is a plus v sat and when your uh, the reference volt the positive voltage of this op amp is going to be at plus v sat by 2 i'm going to call it as plus vf so when your input signal crosses plus vf or v sat by 2 your output will go to minus v sat when your input crosses plus vf or v sat your output will go to minus v sat here the moment your output goes to minus v sat your reference the point of comparison here now becomes minus v sat by 2 your positive terminal now comes to minus v sat by 2 so you see here what's happening in the circuit is that the reference voltage of the op amp itself is changing this this uh, zero i can call this as a zero crossing detector this part as a zero crossing detector it looks like this guy's reference itself is changing its magnitude so now the next crossing point if your output has to go to change its polarity if it has to go from plus v sat to minus v sat what should happen your negative voltage should go lower than the positive voltage and the positive voltage is at minus v sat by 2 now now it has to go lower than minus v sat by 2 only then your output will trigger your output will go to minus v sat so that's what is shown in this graph here so the negative to positive transition or positive to negative transition took place at minus vf this is how the transition happened but the moment i am changing my polarity the negative to positive transition occurs at a very different point so this is what we call hysteresis because of this 
we can avoid zero uh, false triggering in the circuit so now what happens of course there is also noise now so here there is vi and there is also some noise voltage on top of the reference voltage you know the, the resistors will add noise op amp will add noise and all that so when i add noise to my input signal i am actually comparing vi minus vn okay i can model it as uh, a voltage at this point noise input referred noise and then i can simply call vi minus vn okay maybe the polarity doesn't matter let's call it vi minus vn okay so i've, I've modeled it as a voltage source like this a series voltage source so this is vi and uh, so the input voltage of uh, the op amp is going to be vi minus vn now even if your vi minus vn changes its polarity if if even if it is going to change here you will always remain in this region because if you look at this characteristic there is no way once you transition to high logic high there is no way for you to go back to minus uh, or, or logic low in this case when you transition to minus v sat there is no way you can go to plus v sat as in this region okay you have to decrease your input to minus vf levels only then you can go to plus vf plus v sat so that's how we solve this problem of zero uh, false triggering yes input is changing slowly yes there is noise but there is hysteresis the positive to negative and negative to positive transition doesn't occur at the same point that is why we avoid false triggering okay so hope that answered your question